Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a paint job. This board and as a product of that, this video actually got held up so many times it took much longer than it should have. Uh, for a start, New Zealand or the North Island of New Zealand had a big cyclone come through. It was pretty chaotic, caused a lot of damage, wasn't able to work. And then after four days of bunkering down for the cyclone and then doing the big cleanup and all that kind of stuff, finally finished the board and there was a problem with it at the end so we had to continue so we'll get to that stage a little later in the video and then I finally got a message today from the owner of the board who has since picked it up and he has discovered another problem with the board so it actually might be coming back sometime in the very near future so stick around for all that drama but other than that no major concerns with the board uh, it was in watertight condition, I wouldn't have hesitated to surf it. Essentially the customer wants the rails painted and the fin box is probably our only area of concern. Originally this board would have had a glass in fin. The glass in fin is obviously ripped out and it's got this dodgy repair over it. So I'm probably going to recloth that just so I know that it's safe. It did feel alright, but um, yeah, I don't trust repairs that look like that generally. The other side of the board was also pretty good. A uh, little ding on the deck, uh, rails were in very similar condition. Um, yeah, from a watertight perspective, the rails weren't of a concern, but if we're going to be painting over them, we want our paint to sit nice and flat and evenly. We don't want any ugly lumps and bumps underneath it. So we're going to have to do something with those rails before we can paint. So we're going to move pretty quickly on this video through the repair process because there's nothing too amazing or different with the other videos that I've posted. Uh, essentially, as every job does, we're starting by sanding. Because these boards, these older Atlas boards, are glass so heavily, essentially they're glass like boats, I'm buzzing the whole thing with 80 grit and I'm sanding it really hard, as hard as I can. There's going to be a lot of weird materials and residues on it, so I'm going to sand the entire board, clear all that up, find any dings that do need repairing, and then we can make a plan from there. So I was in touch with this customer about a week before he actually brought the board in. Um, he basically told me he wants rail bands, he wants a tail patch over the ugly fin box repair, and his dad being an old school member of the Piha Surf Club or Piha Surf Rescue, uh, he wanted them done in those club colours, which are green, black and red. So once he was finally able to bring the board in, we kind of made a game plan, and down on my notes I wrote that I, uh, he wanted the rails green, he wanted the tail patch red, and everything was going to have a black pinstripe around it. So now that we've sanded super hard with our 80 grit, cleaned the whole board up, I'm going to mask off this fin box, I'm going to flip the board over and start masking along the cut lap, pretty roughly, but roughly along the cut lap, and then flip the board back, and we'll start preparing to get our box clothed over. As per usual, no straight lines, we're not going straight across rail from rail. We're going to cut a little bit of a diamond shape or a point, just so we're not creating any kind of snapping point. And you'd struggle to snap one of these boards anyway. And I am only clothing this with two ounce, because I'm pretty confident that the original repair or installation on this box is structurally okay. Uh, I just want to make sure there's no pinholes or anything small that I haven't noticed that's going to let water in. The cloth isn't going to wrap the rails, but there is some damage to the points of that square tail, so I am going to sort of lap the cloth around the tail to make sure that's all tidied up as well. So skipping ahead majorly here, because this isn't really a repair video, it's a painting video. So I've laminated over that fin box, I've wrapped that cloth over the tail, so here we're working on the deck side and I'm hot coating that cloth on the tail. And then I've masked off the entire cut lap on the deck side of the board. So I'm going to go over all of the rails with resin. There are a few little spots I kind of patched repair with some cloth. So I'm going to pour some resin over all of the rails, making sure that even the sections I haven't clothed are covered. We're going to be able to sand it nice and smooth and be able to paint over a nice even surface. Once all those deck side rails are done, we're going to flip the board over, mask around our fin box patch, mask around any other little patches we've put around the place mask off the tuck line and we're going to resin coat all of our cloth and all of the rails again so we got something nice to sand and work with. So 
So now all of our resin is cured, we know that the board's watertight, in theory we could just finish sand the whole thing now and it's guaranteed to be good to go in the surf. Keeping in mind we started this sand with 80 grit, so now that our resin's cured we're going to sand everything, the whole board with 120 to get rid of all of those 80 grit scratches, then we're going to move our way up to 240, 320 and then finally 400 wet and then we're ready for paint. So we're pretty lucky with this board, we don't have to mark out where our line's going to be because the cut lap and the tuck on the board is so visible, so we're just going to follow that with our masking tape. So I'm using a 6mm fine line tape here, you want a really narrow tape because that tape's going to be easy to curve around corners and get a nice line with. The wider the tape you're using, the harder it's going to be to get a nice drawn out line. You want to pull out a bunch of tape, like a meter's worth of tape, and just using, in this case, my left hand, I'm just kind of guiding the tape, and my right hand is just sticking it down into place. If you mess it up, peel it back up, stick it back down again, take your time, because it's going to look like dog's balls if you mess it up. If you've watched my tip of the day videos, you will have seen the method when you're crossing tapes over themselves, like in the case of that tail. If you've got tape crossing over tape, then no matter how hard you mush it down, you're always going to have a bit of a ramp where the higher piece of tape goes up, across and down and you end up with a little gap just there where the paint could get under. So make sure you smush that in with your fingernail just to push it really hard against that lower piece of tape. Otherwise you're sure to get paint bleeding through into that little gap. When we're happy with our fine line tape, we're going to widen it up a little bit. This is just an 18mm tape, just because it's easier to mask our paper down to an 18mm tape than a 6mm area. We don't want any paint leaking through a gap that we've missed. Some paper to cover it all up so we don't get green all over the deck and the underside of the board. And then from there we are ready to spray. With jobs like this, the prep is so time consuming and the painting is so quick but the prep is so important to a good job at the end of the day. So I'm using a Molotov rattle can and my clears will be Molotov as well. I use these paints for 99% of my work. Um, the only reason I would use something different is if they don't have the colour, which is pretty rare. In that case I mix it up and use the airbrush. But I can highly recommend these Molotov paints. Even without the clear coats, they're really hard wearing and weatherproof. They're pretty amazing. I'm starting by spraying the rails because as I spray the rail I'm actually putting overspray on the flat parts of the board so then when I paint the flat parts of the board it's going to cover that dry overspray from when I've sprayed my rails. In total each side of the board is going to have two coats of this green so we know we've got total coverage we're not going to have any bald spots or lighter areas darker areas it's all going to be the same and we're not going to be able to see any of the original board underneath the paint. So the general technique is I put one coat on one side and then I flip the board over, put another coat on the other side, flip the board over, second coat, flip the board over, fourth coat. The flipping on a 9 foot 6 Atlas Mal is the scariest part of the whole process. Because I can't touch the rails because they're wet I need to sort of push my palms together on the deck and the underneath of the board, move it away from the racks, rotate and then bring it back over the racks again. One day I will make a rack that just flips the board with, I don't know, the press of a button or the moving of a lever or something, but for now this is how I do it. It's very sketchy, I hate doing it. It's fine on smaller boards, but with big boards like this, it takes a bit of strength and um, yeah, it's kind of scary. A real good way to mess up your paint job if you rub your arm on the rail or hit the racks with the board. Once all our colours on, I'm going to leave it for 5 or 10 minutes and then I'm going to come back with my matte clear in this case. I don't want something super glossy on this old board. So we're going to do a matte clear, same technique. We're starting on the very edge of the rails, working our way in towards the paper. Flip the board, do the same on the other side and the same amount of coats as well. So each side is going to get two layers of clear total. So after that clear coat's gone on, I've left it until the next day to give that paint a good chance to cure a fair bit anyway, because I want to be able to mask over it. So when I've unmasked it, I've left the original piece of fine line on 
that masked our edge for our green paint. So now with that original piece of fine line, I'm gonna use more fine line, one piece on either side of it, and I'm gonna follow it. And then once that's done, I'm gonna pull out the original piece of fine line, and that's gonna leave us a six mil gap in between our two new pieces, and that will be our pinstripe. Anywhere that your tape's crossing over, don't forget to push down with your fingernail. Make sure all those little ramps are nice and butted in against that lower piece of tape. I'm going to pinstripe the outline for the little tail patch as well and in order to do this I'm going to use the tail end of a fish template I've got in the shaping bay, kind of mock it up with a pencil and then mask it off. Same deal as the rest of the pinstripes, once I've followed that pencil line with my fine line I'm going to put one more piece either side of each piece of that fine line, pull out the middle piece and we're going to have that same 6mm pinstripe. When I'm doing my pinstripes, I like to do my first coat in short little bursts across the pin, just so I know I've got everything covered. Saves a little bit of paint, saves on a bit of overspray, but my second coat I do sort of the same way I did the rails, just walking around the whole perimeter of the board, spraying as I go. Same coats as the rails, so we're going to do two of black, two of clear, the same matte clear, and then wait for it to cure. So once that's all kicked off and it's dry, we can peel our tape. This is easily the most satisfying part of the job. Watching yourself peel the tape, getting that nice sharp line. I'm gonna pull all that tape off and get ready to spray inside the tail patch. We've only used about seven kilometers worth of masking tape so far, so we're doing pretty well. So now I'm gonna mask off these black pinstripes, mask off all the green and the forward part of our tail patch, getting ready to put our red in. Now reds, yellows and oranges are really bad at covering anything you're trying to cover. You can see through them really easily. So what I'm going to do here is put down two kind of light coats over this ugly repair, the white fin box. And I've got a couple of pencil lines here from when I drew out the tail patch. Once I've got my two coats down and they're kind of tacked off a little bit, then I'll do another two full coats over the whole area. Keep real close eyes on it as it's drying because you may have to put a third if you're using a red or a yellow. They really don't cover very well, so don't demask it until you're confident that everything has been hidden. Another option would be to paint the whole area white or a light grey first and then put the red over the top of that. But I find that if you're spraying up to tape edges, when it comes time to peel the tape, where the red has met the tape, there'll be a little bead of your white or your gray paint along the edge of it. So I'd rather just put a little bit of extra red down and that's the only color we're gonna see when we lift this tape up. Another two coats of matte clear over the top once it's tacked off a little bit. Notice that I've pulled the masking tape off of the fin box just so that edge where the masking tape was is gonna be a little smaller because now we're spraying over that edge with the clear. Once I've sprayed all of this, I'm going to leave it for half an hour or so, and then I'm going to remove all of the masking tape and paper, except for my fine line. Because the paint hasn't fully cured yet on the rails, I just don't want masking tape sitting on that paint for too long, because it might mark my paint job. I leave the fine line until the next day because the paint's still going to be gummy, and you might actually lift some of that gumminess up and sort of drop it on an area of the board you don't want it. So better to peel it off on the next day. Now it's peeled off, I'm gonna sand the entire board with 1200. All of the paint, all of the unpainted surfaces, everything's gonna get a wet sand with 1200. I'm really trying to bring down the edges where the paint has met the masking tape and also get rid of any of the texture of the paint, sort of give it a flat finish. So after all that sanding, this was the finished product. I was pretty happy with it. It wasn't really my thing, the big red patch, but that's what the customer wanted, or so I thought. Happy with the outcome, I sent him a photo of it, telling him it was ready to be picked up, and he sent me this. Really, really great job, mate. The mat looks exactly how I wanted it. Slight miscommunication on the color. Everything is perfect except where you've done the full red. That was meant to be the same green and the red was meant to be just two string of thin lines. Damn! Damn! 
So we're back to the sanding rack. We're going to wet sand it with some 360 um, so the paint can stick to it. And I want to get rid of all the clear coat that's on top of the red. I don't want to sand any of the green with 360 because it's going to be a nightmare to bring it back to 1200. So I'm just sanding the black pinstripe surrounding the red area and the red area itself. Back into the painting shed, we're going to mask off the fin box. I want to mask slightly smaller than I did last time, so I'm going to see a small amount of that white fin box between my red paint and my masking tape, because once I peel this tape I don't want to see any fraction of red at all, except for those pinstripes. Then I'm going to lay some fine line on the outside of the black pinstripes. Once I've got that fully surrounded, then I'm going to lay more fine line on top of the black pinstripes, and again, I want to see a fraction of black between my masking tape and the red. Once it was masked off, I got some 3 mil tape and I used the ruler to make sure my 3 mil tape was nice and straight from the original glue line in front of the tail patch to back at the tail end of the board. First coat of green is going to go from rail to rail across the board. I'm trying to spray away from the middle of the board because I haven't masked off or papered off the entire board, so I don't want overspray on the areas I haven't masked. Second coat of green is going to go nose to tail direction. This is just making sure that I've got green everywhere and none of the red is going to shine through on a missed area. Once that green's down, I'm going to start unmasking it straight away. I'm going to take all the tape off, even over the fin box, and the only tape I'm going to leave is the fine line tape we left on the outside of the black pinstripe. So now every surface that we've re-sanded is exposed, the black pinstripes, all of the red paint, and the fin box, so we're going to clear coat all of that, and that's going to hide all of our 320 scratches. Two coats of clear coat as per usual, first one's going to go up and down from nose to tail of the board and then we're going to finish the way we started the green coat originally, side to side, rail to rail and you can see that clear coat is covering everything, the black, the red, the green, the fin box. It's going to minimise our tape edges or the height of our tape edges too which is going to make sanding a little easier and less chance of sand through if you don't have big fat tape edges. So once again I'll give it half an hour, peel all that tape off except for the fine line, leave it until the next day, finish sand it and then we will finally be done. Well, that's it. This video took about as long to edit as the board did to finish. So if you did get something out of the video, it's always appreciated if you hit the subscribe button. I certainly have more coming. The customer picked the board up today. He was stoked. About an hour after he picked it up, I got a message from him and there's a new problem with the board. So I have a sneaking suspicion this board's actually going to be back in the shed in the next week or two. So stay tuned for that see what happens and again thank you for watching hope you got something out of it we'll see you in the next one Cheerio.